Jerry, we have a really cool video today. Ooh, what is it? It's a history lesson for magicians and people that might be interested in playing cards. Nice. I wanted to do this for a while. It's about collectible playing cards and things that be, could be done with playing cards. Um, so we're going to get right into this here. This may be a little bit longer video than usual. But if you focused on here, cards are all different sizes and shapes. Here's Jumbo. Here's Miniature. Okay, here's a little pack here that's for narrow-minded people. <laughs> we picked this up at a convention not too long ago, remember? Yeah. Look at these look at these little things. Yeah. <laughs> Is that cool or what? And they make a they make a pretty good fan. Mm -hmm. All right. I think it comes from France if I'm not mistaken. But out of all the cards, I mean, I I tend to like um bicycle. Blue bikes are probably my favorite. <clears throat> Excuse my voice here. I don't know. But you have to be here's a whole stack of them here. And yeah, you got to be careful with these things cuz they yeah, they do weigh a lot. <laughs> well, watch very closely here. We're just going to give it a shake, and it condenses into Ooh. one pack. Now we're going to open these up, and I'm going to get these cards out and show you a few things here. Now, I've been using card manipulations and things of that nature for many, many years. And what we have here is a pack of playing cards. We could give them a cut and so forth. Now, my one of my favorite fans with playing cards is a one-hand reverse fan. Now, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of mentalism. The pack can be legitimately shuffled by a spectator. Okay. And I have this uh, wooden box here. We're going to just drop the cards down inside. Okay. And if I close it up, nice. give it a shake. My eyes can legitimately be closed. And yet, just with the pass of the hand, I could tell this is an ace. Ooh, wow. All right. Let's see. You're pretty good. Yeah, well, the powers that be. Look, this is <laughs> yeah. this is a nine. Ooh, Let's yeah. see. This is a six. And I could go on and on, and the pack can be legitimately uh, shuffled. It could uh -huh. be investigated. Wow. Thank you, Joe Berg. Uh, for all the magic collectors out there, you know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, this is a, I actually built this. It's It's a version of Joe Berg's uh, Mento box, I believe it was called. Oh, but yeah, and Jumbo, I'll show you this. I just want to get it away, out, out of the way some of these things before I bring out the collectible cards. This is a form of Jumbo wild card. I've been using this in my close-up act, as you know. I know. This is a nice one. Yeah, for over 30 years. What I basically tell the spectators is you will think you caught me mm -hmm. how this is done. Here we have the Ace of Clubs. If I was to place this down onto the table, turn it over, we have another Ace of Clubs. So we're going to follow the same format. One goes down and turn it over one goes up so we're going to continue with the same format so we got the face down over here face up over here three three six one makes seven all right we're going to put this down until the indifferent card happens to be the two of hearts and i generally gather these up and i fan down the four face down aces and the four face up i have a spectator rub some of the red ink and it changes but I say, oh, there's more. That's only <laughs> half good. You probably expected more. Yeah. We're going to give a rub, and there you go. It changes again. Wow. So there was a miracle today, and the cards can be shown. So that's uh, one of my standard things I use with jumbo cards. Now, during my stage act, I also make cards rise, things float, and so forth with playing cards. Here's a pretty cool effect. It's by Choose Magic. Now, we're going to fan this out. Here's the... Queen of Hearts, and my fingers are wiggling and alive. Well, they were last time I looked. <laughs> but I'm just going to pass my hand over. One, two, three. Look at this. Believe it or not, it diminishes in size. Wow, look at that. Well, the wonders never cease. Now we're going to drop these down, fan them out. This is the Ten of Hearts. One, two, three. Look at this. It diminishes in size. You're amazed, aren't you? I am. Right. <laughs> we could keep on going. I mean, you'd be surprised. Now, there's different ways to shrink cards. L. Baker had a nice way. Mm -hmm. I kind of like this a little bit better. I believe the originator of this. There you go. Look at that. They're, They're pretty small. The originator of this, I believe, was U.F. Grant. And, wow, this is so doggone small. It's not even funny. And look at this. Oh, my goodness. It's a, it small? Yeah, they get actually a little smaller than that. Look at this. Oh, and we're, they're teeny weeny. Yes. <laughs> they're so small, it's not even funny. Wow. And we could basically make them vanish. So there you go. Awesome. Now here's a couple of decks that I really like. And 
I'll show you some of the more popular, more expensive ones here. But these are very nice. These are Pioneers. And I love the backs of these. They fan very, very well. I love the faces of these as well. So you could give a thumb fan. That's what most people tend to do. Like I said, my favorite is a one-hand reverse fan. That's the most beautiful fan, I think. Ooh, nice. Very, but these Pioneers are really cool. I love the double fan backs. Yeah, really cool. All right. We'll place these in here. I'm just going through a couple of popular decks that are out. One of my favorite is Tele Ho. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. Yes, I use these quite a bit. Blue Bikes and Tele Ho's are probably my best cards that I use. I love the designs on this. And there you go. We could fan them out. It's a beautiful pack. Tele Ho's last quite a while. Uh, here's something over here. This is like a double. This is called Imperial playing cards. It's almost like a double bike. These are very, very nice as well. And you can give them a shuffle. I could tell these are going to glide pretty well. Oh, look at that. Oh, my nice. goodness. Glides real nice. And I'm going to show you something that's kind of cool here. Perfect for the spooky season here. Oh, look at this. Wow, they're all orange on the backs. Ooh, yeah, that's a good color for the <laughs> And not just that, but let me reach down here. Okay. This is going to freak you out, Sherry. Oh, no. <laughs> what I have here is a black light. Oh. And I'm going to turn off this light so you can see a little better. We're going to really make this pop. This is so cool for Halloween. Look at the cards. Oh, wow, they glow. Not just on the back, but also <gasps> on the front. Oh, that's so cool. Pretty cool. And what's neat about this is I can actually just pass my hand over it like uh -huh. so. Give a little rub, and it <gasps> changes to blank. Now, most cards come with that gimmick. You can make a fan, and yeah. they stay blank. And then you can give it a cut. Oh, and, they, and they go to somewhat normalcy. Yeah. All right. So let me put this light back on. So that's a Halloween pack of cards, which is kind of cool. Playing cards, for those of you that are interested in playing cards, they go back to over a 1,000 years by the Tang Dynasty in China. And then it migrated over... Playing cards, once they started printing them and came out with paper, it went over to Europe. Italy's big on playing cards. They have beautiful cards. And uh, it's just, they're fascinating. I mean, they, they really are. Now, I'm going to get to some of the more collectible playing cards. This is only a sample of what I have. I have much more than this, but these are pretty cool. And what I have here is some of the more popular ones, like I said. We're going to open this up. All right, and I'll lay it right here. And I'll get out a few of these. This is a sealed deck here from Tom Mullica, and he even signed it. He had a comedy club uh, back in the 80s, and he was fantastic. Joe Kasari was a really good card manipulator, um, manipulator back in the 60s, 70s, and he came up with his own playing cards. So these are his actual playing cards that he would manipulate. Beautiful pack. Oh. You can make all different designs according to the orientation. Yeah. yeah, they're really, really cool. Uh, here is Harry Anderson's playing cards here. Here's a pack from the Magic Castle. This is a Piotnik deck from Austria. I have a whole Ooh. bunch of these. This is just a sample of these. Very sweet. Jeff McBride's manipulation hey. cards. Uh, here's... Um, she's pretty popular. She was just on uh, oh. Al Elena de, uh, de Guzman. I can't pronounce her name properly, but here's her stripe pack and again you can make it blank if you want but uh, you can cut it and they all go back to normal mm -hmm. uh, but the beautiful they're called jazz stripes Ooh. absolutely gorgeous cards nice and they're fanning very well I didn't even put any fanning powder on there for those of you that don't know fanning powder is zinc stearate mm -hmm. okay here's Ken Klosterman he was a really cool collector from Columbus Ohio he had one of the largest personal private collections around. Carto colors have been very popular, and they're actually pretty expensive nowadays. It's an old, old fanning pack, and depending on the orientation, oh, yeah. you can come up with a million different designs. This is all for fanning because both sides. Oh, look at that. That's what's cool. Beautiful. So you could come up with a million different yeah. 
with split fans and so forth. Oh, nice. Okay, that's the Carto color. And we'll put this over here. Uh, oh, here's one of my favorites. This is Cardini. Pitchford, oh. Richard Pitchford, I believe his name was. He was probably one of the greatest card manipulators of all time. This is the Silver Pegasus. He made the gold and the silver Pegasus. I believe this is 1928, 1929. It's sealed. It has the original seal on here. This, mm. is, this is not a reprint. This is an original. Okay. So it goes for a pretty decent. Collectible. Huh? It's a very collectible item. Here goes Abbott's fanning cards, which they're very nice. Uh, here's an old thing I picked up from a collection. Hmm. This is the, uh, there's the directions in here. This is the, uh, this is the uh, waterfall pack, okay, where you could, you know, this is very old now. This is like, whew. okay, so you could say, here's Niagara Falls from the American side. Here it is from the Canadian side. Here it is frozen, all right? <laughs> all right. Always got to have a little shtick. Okay, so that's the first thing there. I'm going to get this out of the way. Like I said, I do not like making long videos. So this is a little longer than usual. But here we have a few other ones that are kind of cool. Uh, we have another Magic Castle one. We were at the Magi Fest in Columbus back in uh, February. So mm -hmm. that they, was nice. Yeah, they picked up. We picked up a pack here. This is uh, another double bike type of thing. I love these. Hmm. I mean, they fan very well. Uh, the design is extremely well. See. Mm -hmm. And let's see what else we have here. Okay. Oh, these have been popular in recent years. A friend of mine got me these. This is the uh, Vivid Kingdoms. Oh. And uh, Michael's friend, he oh, that was nice. He had them sitting out for me. It was really nice. Very, they've become very, very popular, Vivid Kingdoms. And very cool cards. That was nice of him doing that. Here we have Thistle and Rose. This is Tenyo. Oh, okay. Tenyo from Japan. Uh, these are his original directions in here. Oh, nice. I could tell by the fill of these. They will not fan very well. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could tell they need some fanning powder on here. But uh, very, very pretty effect. Yeah, they are pretty. It fans, yeah. it fans okay, but it doesn't have that glide. You could do it each time. Yeah, that it should have. That's so, nice. Yeah, it's Tenyo from Japan. Very popular. There's the Land's automatic playing cards. Mm -hmm. Growing up as a kid, we all had these. It's a marked deck. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's something neat. I kind of included this because I like it. This goes back to the 70s, I believe. This is Fantini's Delusion deck. Yeah. It's a really nice effect. Okay. Very nice effect. And the Aristocrat is very nice as well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a move that I've been doing probably close to 40 years. Now, I can back palm. I've, I actually did stage shows when I was younger with back palming and so forth. In recent years, I switched from back palming to something I did as a teenager, I learned it from the Amateur Magician's Handbook. Okay, it's called the clip. Mm -hmm. And not many, not many magicians seem to know about this. You pass your hand, you got a oh, fan nice. that appears from nowhere. Yeah. Now, even on stage, I'll do this. I'll drop it into, oh. a, into a top hat. And then uh, finally, you give a flick vanish, boom, it's gone. Reappears here. Then what I'm going to do is pass my hand one more time. That's a nice fan. Watch my hands. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I drop it into the top hat. I hit the uh, button for the card fountain to come up. So there's an eclectic assortment of playing cards. I hope you folks have had fun. Thanks for stopping by, guys.